Hello, and welcome to another Spectacularly Thing. Today we are going to look at a company called Argon and their new product. But first, I'm going to show you their old product. Argon40 is a group of self-proclaimed electronics geeks and enthusiasts with a passion to create things and share their beloved projects with the maker community. This is one of their first products that I ever pur purchased from them. And this is called the Argon 1. This is my favorite Raspberry Pi case. It fits the Raspberry Pi 4 perfectly. All the ports are on the back with GPIO on top behind this magnetic door. And on the bottom towards the front is the SD card slot. There's an Argon 1 version 2 which introduced full size HDMI ports on the back. And there's an Argon 1 M2 that adds an M.2 port on the bottom so you can add an SSD to the Raspberry Pi 4. Their newest product, however, is this, the Argon Eon. It's a four bay network attached storage device designed for the Raspberry Pi 4. We'll take a closer look at this in a minute, but first let's see what it's replacing in my network. This is the Rad RadXA Quad SATA kit for the Raspberry Pi 4. A little over a year ago, you watched me build this tank. I did a few videos about it, but for the past six months it has been an iSATA target for my main machine. My only complaint about this is the noise of the fans. Hopefully, the Eon with its passive cooling will be quieter. First, let's take this apart so that I can get to the hard drives that are in it. And here it is. Again, we are missing these screws here and here because the drives wouldn't fit properly. So I'm just going to finish taking this apart so that I can get the hard drives out of here and get to the Raspberry Pi on the bottom. Now I want to get to this Raspberry Pi 4 down here and so to do that we take out these screws. This is held on by the GPIO port over here. So carefully separate these and slowly pry it apart because the fan is connected to this. So that can just come right off. Then we need to <laughs> find the right bit for this. And that's all there is to it. I have my hard drives and my Raspberry Pi ready to go into the Argon Eon. Next, let's unbox the Argon Eon. The Argon Eon 4 bay network attached storage. It can take four 2.5 inch SATA hard drives, four 2.5 inch SSDs, or two 3.5 inch hard disk drives with a maximum single volume size of 18 terabytes. Now let's open it. Comes with some instructions. Let's take a minute to look at these instructions and see what it says. There are installation instructions, which we will need in just a minute. Oh, there is a fan in here. Hopefully it's not as loud as the other one. And instructions for installing OMV, Open Media Vault. has a button here, which I think has an OLED screen under it. USB 2, USB 3, LAN port. Not sure what these are for. We'll find out, I'm sure. Oh, the card goes in here. That's nice. One of the problems that I had with the old case was that in order to get to the card, you had to take the whole thing apart. But it's all labeled USB 3, USB 2, Here's the GPIO port. It says GPIO pin 1 here. Pin 40 is here. The 12 volt power supply plugs in here. AV here. Full size HDMI. This is very nice. Let's find out what's in here. So it comes with a screwdriver. That's pretty nice. Ooh, it's a nice screwdriver too. These are pads, these are thermal pads. 
screws, more screws, and some feet. Let's take a look at the power supply. It's a universal power supply. We'll just set that aside for now. Let's take these screws out. The real-time clock uses a battery that I don't have, so I'm going to have to go get that. But as you can see here, this is where the four drives go. There's space, so you can put two three and a half inch drives in, and then two two and a half inch drives on the side. I'm just going to put four two and a half inch drives in. Has an internal USB three. There's a fan at the top, which sucks in air through these vents on the side here. Hopefully that's quiet. It's a pretty big fan, so it won't have that high-pitched whirring noise that the other one had. It stinks, I'll tell you that. It has an odor to it. Okay, that's free. Now, there's a little connector. After taking those four screws out, I can feel this thing start to move, but there's a connector. And lift that straight up. Then take this out. And then we can have a closer look at the drives. So they're labeled SATA 1, SATA 2, SATA 3, and SATA 4. Next, we have the fake Raspberry Pi that we have to take out of here. And I think that's held in with these four parts here. Let me get my eye fix it. And then we can see what we need to do here. Now, I guess we could take the screws out, but I don't want to take this bottom part out. So let me grab my Raspberry Pi. And we'll put this on. Just like this. It's a little tight. But it goes in nice and snug. Now you can see all the ports are on the back of the Raspberry Pi. It's really handy. And then we're going to power it through the GPIO. We want to put these, these gray pads on the main chips here and here, the memory chip and the processor. Because then they, attach, they touch this here that helps cool or that cools the Raspberry Pi while it's in action. Finally, we take this ribbon cable with the SD, the fake SD card in it, and we stick that in all the way. And now we get to put screws back in. Now we put this back in. And remember, it's got this connector at the bottom here. Okay, next we want to put our hard drives in. There are holes in this, here and here, as well as here and here, for the two and a half inch drives. And then these holes here are for the three and a half inch drives. There you can see all four drives. And they're really nice. There we go. It's all back together. Now we take this piece and we line it up and we plug it in. And now we've got that all together. Let's just look. Okay. Now, down here, right here, right here, 
is a switch. 1-2 is default. 2-3 is always on. I want this always on, so I'm going to move it on to 2-3, just like that. Now, just take a look, make sure everything is good. I'll put a battery in for the real-time clock later. But it looks good. Last thing that we have to do is put the face plates back on. These are not see-through, so we can't put RGB in there. I think that would be pretty neat to put some RGB in there if these were see-through. But they're not. They're dark. They're black. Black panels. And there we have it. Next stop, turn it on. Let's go ahead and install the software. First thing we need to do is SSH in. The default password is Ubuntu. And it forces you to change the password on first launch. And then it kicks you out. So it forces you to log in again with the new password. The first thing you should always do on a new system is update it. Okay, now that that's done, let's give it a good old reboot. The first thing we're going to do is to change our machine name. To do that, we need to change two files. Etsy slash hostname. And we're going to change this to Octavia in, the, in my case. And then we change Etsy hosts. Next, let's install the Argon Eon software. And just like that, the fan has gone down to zero. And it's nice and quiet in here. <laughs> uh, that's good. Also, the OLED screen and the button work. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up Samba. To do that, we need a, we need a data directory. As you can see, we have SDA1, SDB1, SDC1, and SDD1. And they're each 1.8 terabytes in size. What we want to do is we want to go ahead and merge those into a single RAID array. And to do that, we use the MDADM command. We're going to use RAID 5 with four RAID devices. Those are dev, SDA, dev, SDB, dev SDC, and dev SDD. Excuse me, we want the partitions, not the, the drive. So we want dev SDA1, SDB1, SDC1, and SDD1. And then we go ahead and create the, the RAID array. There. Now let's check it. And you can see it's created the array. They should all say active sync. Why this last one is saying spare rebuilding? It's probably because this used to be in an RAID array, and so it thinks that it needs to rebuild the RAID array from my old system. Now this won't, re this won't survive a reboot, so the next set of commands will ensure that the RAID array will survive the reboot. Next, we need to format the drive. <laughs> Pseudo make file system. We'll use ext4 because it's simple. Dev md volume 1. And that'll create the file system on the drive, on the RAID array. And this just takes a minute to complete. Done. Now we want to mount it. And it's mounted. 
We want this to uh, survive a reboot. So what we need to do is we need to find out what the UUID is. And you can see here we're MD-127. So this, this is our UUID. Let's just copy that to the clipboard. And then we can do a sudo vim etsy fs tab. And we'll go ahead and add, we'll add this drive. And then I think we can verify it. Let's try this. Success, no warnings or errors detected. Excellent. Now let's reboot, or let's, let's CD to our drive. And you can see lost and found is there. Let's just touch a testing.txt file. Permission denied. All right, so our permissions are a little bit funky. Let's go ahead and change the, that so that everyone has right access to this drive. Now let's go into the data drive and let's touch the test.txt file again. This time it worked. Now let's go ahead and reboot and see if this file is still there upon reboot. Now we do a list block and you can see that the RAID 5 array is set up on server data. If we check our server data, you can see that our test file is still there. So it survived a reboot. That's great. Let's go ahead and get Samba set up. So we do sudo apt install Samba and we'll see that it's already installed. So we don't need to do anything there. Now we need to configure the share. So I'm going to create a folder called shares on the data drive. And then we're going to edit the config file for Samba. We'll leave everything as the default. We'll just go all the way to the bottom and insert shares. Okay, now let's go ahead and restart the Samba service and let's check to make sure that the service is running and it is active running. And let's create a user. We say we want to create a password, so we'll say sudo smbd uh, smb password dash a ubuntu, and then we give it a new password for Samba, and we've added the user Ubuntu. Okay, now we check in Windows to see if it worked. There's our shares folder, and we can create a new text document, hello.txt, and if we go back to Ubuntu, you can see there's our hello text file. That's all there is to setting up this Argon Eon NAS device and Samba. If you'd like to see something else, installed on this machine, please let me know. I don't have a plan to install it as an iSCSI target just yet, but if you'd like to see how to do that, please let me know in the comments. This has been another spectacular thing. I really appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.